Liza Koshi, welcome to the Daily Social Distancing Show. Thank you, thank you. It's an honor to be here, uh, an honor to speak with Emmy-nominated Daily Show. Congratulations oh, on that. Oh, oh, shucks. Oh, <laughs> I appreciate that. Um, no, but for real, though, you know, it, it really is amazing to have you here just because you have managed to find a way to do everything in your life exceptionally well. You managed to turn what you were doing on YouTube into a presence on Instagram. You moved it to another platform. You've now moved into TV. You've moved into film as well. And as we saw in the clip that we just played, you're in a new movie that's where you're playing a character who's a dancer. And I mean, that's pretty much you, right? That's pretty much me. I'm pretty much just playing myself in most things that I do. But I tapped into a little bit of Channing Tatum. I uh, channeled the Channing, Channing for this one. But uh, yeah, I'm so excited. I've been dancing online for years and I didn't realize that I was auditioning for this role in this movie to be the best dancer. And I say every time, like, we have the best damn editor because I'm definitely not the best dancer. But uh, <laughs> it was fun. It was so, it's a dream come true. Yeah, you know what? I feel like you, you're good at, you're good at uh, self-deprecating humor, but you are actually... I remember the first video I saw of yours, I was like, oh, this is funny. She's acting like she can dance, which is very funny. And then I saw another video, and I was like, no, she can dance. Like, she can dance, right. she dance. I couldn't find any research. Are you, are you, like, professionally trained, or is this just like... You were just like, no, I just dance. I have it in my bones. You couldn't find anything. I cleared out Google. Uh, no, I started dancing um, at the age of four, so I started doing, like, ballet and jazz and tap. Took a little hiatus in middle school and then went into drill and dance team in high school. Had my Friday Night Lights dream and uh, in Houston, Texas. So I call myself off-brand Beyonce. Still working on the thighs, though. But I'm a professional dancer now, and I'm very proud of that. <laughs> You've taken the following that you've gathered in all these different mediums, and now you've gone, hey, I want to use this following to get people to vote. And you teamed up with Michelle Obama um, yes, right. to, to get people to the polls. Tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, so I feel like my journey or my audition for Mrs. Michelle Obama was uh, back when I interviewed President Barack Obama in 2016, so I auditioned to work with Michelle. And uh, that really started my journey, and that journey continued whenever I... Uh, in 2018, went into a couple of high schools in Texas with Miss Alicia Keys and Miss America Ferreira and got to go and speak out to Gen Z, go and speak to kids in crowds at their school. And to see like a 16 year old like raise their hand and be like, I don't know how to, how to vote, but I can't wait to do it when I can. So that was so exciting and invigorating to see that like movement and empowerment in just one kid. So I thought, why not do that to all the kids that and an audience that I have online? And uh, now I'm so happy and honored to be working with When We All Vote and getting the vote out. Gen Z is so scary. They're brilliant, but I'm terrified of them. And I'm like right on the cusp of Gen Z and millennials. So I feel like it's my job to like coddle millennials after they've been cyber bullied by Gen Z. So I, <laughs> I'm right on that fine line. So I'm I'm talking to both crowds here and and I love, you know, I love how brilliant they are. They will make like a cinematic masterpiece on TikTok, but mm -hmm. yet they don't know how to vote. They have all the information in the palm of their hands, but yet there's this shame in like not knowing it. So encouraging Gen Z to like step out of that shame, step into empowerment and get excited about voting, having their voice heard. It, like it's okay to care about issues that affect your day-to-day -day life. Your journey has been creating you know, from your, from your house, bringing us to your couch, telling us stories from your home. And then you were right. like working so hard and you got into TV, you got into Hollywood, and now Liza Koshy's star is blowing up. And then coronavirus hits and now all the TV shows are coming from your house and from people's apartments and from the couch. <laughs> Do you feel like you got, you got to the, the mountaintop, but it turns out it was like in the valley? Do, like, is there a part of you that goes like, wait, this is what I've been doing my whole life? You're back on the couch? No, nah, well, I'm happy to be back on my parents' couch, uh, being like a parasite and just sucking them love, uh, sucking them of their love and peace. Um, <laughs> but I'm proud because I get to help, you know, traditional transition into digital, which is an honor to be able to do. You're doing my job now, Trevor. You look good. <laughs> and it feels good. It feels good to be back in like a familiar space, but with like brand new eyes to see the world in a different way after I've been in traditional production or I've been a director and executive producer now so now I get to come at content in such a new way and try to blend those worlds is right. like mission and it's all entertainment now right like it's not traditional digital it's like you're just being entertained or you're being informed and there's a lot out there and now it feels like a lot of you youtubers who at one time were considered the kids on YouTube you're now like leading conversations you're now talking about social justice issues you've evolved like as a group which is really interesting to see 
Do you think YouTubers are also taking themselves more seriously than people used to take YouTubers? I think so. I think we're, we're holding ourselves up to a different standard, at least I am in the evolution of a creator and, and producer that I've been. I think, you know, we, we realize how, how crucial and how important our platform can be mm -hmm. and how powerful a voice can be. And especially with the world shifting too, like I think we're all having this internal shift. You know, if you weren't introspective before, you definitely are now looking in the mirror too long. So I think it's just a matter, it's been a matter of time for people to care about, you know, social issues, political issues and, and, and um, you know, express their voices and opinions online and kind of guide their audience to resources that, you know, they're tapping into or that they're excited about. I got to thank you because I am a sponge of information and you are an absolute wealth of knowledge. And, uh, <laughs> I, I'm a suck up for sure, but uh, I soak it up too. So thank you for being like my place to go to, to like inform myself all the more. Um, but yeah, I'm just happy to share those resources with my audience. I think a lot of other creators are too. And when we, when we all vote, I'm so happy to share that as a resource to figure out how to vote, where to vote, when to vote, and you know, in the different world we're living in, that's, that's adjusted. So keeping yourself up to date with the newest information. Well, you thank me, and I thank you for teaching me how to make a show from home. So Eliza Koshi, thank you so much for joining me. <laughs> thank you so much. You're killing it, though. You're killing it. Make, it, make a TikTok. <laughs> make a TikTok. <laughs> They're harder than they look, man. Oh. They are. They're very hard. They weigh, They take more time and they're way harder than they look. Liza, thank you so much, man. Um, good luck with everything. I hope I see you again. Appreciate it. I hope so, too. Bye, guys.